And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and to everybody on YouTube for the return of Jeskai taking turns. Now, I, I know that this is a controversial deck. I know that there are some of you that do not like Nexus of Fate and being able to take all of the turns with it because this is a pretty ridiculously designed card. I, I think this was definitely a mistake by the design team that they didn't really expect this to be a constructed a playable card that was going to be all over um yeah like i just don't think that that was anything that they expected and it just kind of slipped through the crack um they were expecting it to be a commander card for a buy a box promo but oh well um anyway so but we're gonna go ahead and bring this back because there are a lot of people that did like it you know it it uh, hit pretty well on YouTube, and what we're doing today is we have a, uh, a rank up Sunday where I'm playing just four decks that I've liked from the past week, week and a half or so. We're going to be playing two historic decks, this one and then Abzan Bugler, um, the last deck. Abzan Bugler was super impressive whenever we played it before. It's kind of been too long since we played that again. And then uh, two regular standard decks that um, were impressive for, for what we expected. And so we're going to try those out in Mythic also with Mono Green Midrange and then Boros Aggro from Tuesday. This deck, though, is mean. Yeah, this is this is definitely a mean deck. We're just you know, trying to take all of the turns in the game with uh, Nexus of Fate. Then, of course, Karn's Temporal Sundering helps us out. Um, Mindstone and Fire Zone Invention were two things that just made this deck so much better than what it could have been from before. Rome Cloak Giant was really clutch last time, coming in as a 7-7. Even though we don't get it to grab it off of Narset, it was still very clutch with Fires of Invention. But yeah, this is just a deck that we're going to try to try to uh, stay alive long enough to untap and untap with like a Planeswalker, the card advantage engine with like a Karn or a Teferi, and take over. That's the plan. Okay. Um, awesome, Dark Dubs. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah, it's new new computer is doing it great for us. So each deck we're going to play five matches with. So we're going to go over to just traditional, historic, ranked. And we're starting at a low rank now because yesterday, our two decks that we played in ranked yesterday, we, we lost a lot. <laughs> so we're down to 98%. We started yesterday like around 100. And... I know our last deck, we lost four in a row. So we got some work to do today. Let's have some fun. All right, uh, let's see. So we're going to have turn two, Island of Mindstone. Turn three, Temple of Triumph, Mindstone. Turn four. I mean, we do need another blue source technically to cast something like Nexus of Fate. We'll probably find another blue source, and we have the temples to scry. Because turn four, even if we play a temple, we'd still have five mana to be able to play Teferi. The The last deck for today is Abzan Bugler. It's a Militia Bugler Abzan deck built around like the Explore package, a whole bunch of value creatures. It's pretty awesome. I'm glad we put that land down to the bottom, though. Especially since we've just drawn more lands. I guess I don't need a shotgun there. I won't hide from the world any longer. Hello. The Mind Stones protect our Teferi from Doom Foretold. Man, taking all the turns is actually pretty bad against Doom Foretold, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess if my opponent plays Doom Foretold here, that would be brutal. Well, that's also brutal. Hmm. Show remorse. 
first. I'll Let's cry first. first. I need a couple more I need two more lands well after after the land drop next turn I would still need two more lands before I could play to ferry into Nexus. A good card. Let's hope we get on tap. This isn't a fight you can win. Just hoping we get to untap with Teferi. If we do, the game's probably over. Unless they play Doom Foretold. Boo. We get a couple more redraws with the Mind Stones. Because Mind Stones are awesome. I'm just going to draw now before we shuffle... Oh, maybe I should just cast the Nexus and then... Redraw. Okay. Here we go. I can no longer stand by and watch. I guess I can just use this. This might be a bad idea. I know my responsibility. We want to shuffle the Nexus back before we start drawing more. Hold that thought. I guess I should have. I guess I should have just played the Nexus before even bouncing the Teferi to draw that extra card too. Oh, I've done the hero thing. No time for a break. All right, cards start getting stuff. The reason, um, yeah, that's true. We do want Nexus in the deck, but I guess I I was just thinking that we had uh, me bounce. Even though that thing destroys a planeswalker, I'm not too worried about that now. We had scryed a, a land to the bottom. Uh, let's have you this will aid us. grab this, cast this, put that back in, Hurry. and draw. Don't worry, I got um, this. It's either play a 7-7 to start bashing them or draw another card. I'm going to draw another card. Because if we can get one more extra turn card, then we ultimate to fairy. Are you certain of your decision? Keep 
Keep up the pace. Hmm. I've got it. We got there. Okay, let's. A curious choice. Yep, this game's over. I will phase you out of the time stream. Sorry, I'm late. So they don't seem like they're playing too too many creatures that. You know, maybe we don't need Clarion, Realm Cloak Giant as much. We could probably play some Ixalan's Bindings against Doom Foretold. And then just play some Vetoes. Another Narset. I have one Realm Cloak Giant to help finish the game out. <laughs> Yeah, this deck is is very mean. This is definitely a mean deck. This is not a deck to to play to make friends. No, we don't need giant to kill them. We have Castle Arden Vale and we have Karn. Karn can make Karn Structs. And Castle Arden Vale can make some creatures. So we don't really need giant. Um, this deck doesn't. I mean, you can. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can mill them out with the fairy. That takes a lot longer. I don't. I don't even know if you can. I guess you can. Because you have to stop taking turns and let them start taking a whole bunch of turns. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can. That wouldn't be easy, though. <laughs> That's a good question. Are there any decks that, that have blue in them that make friends? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Just guy ramp. Around seven mana on turn four. What if they legions end my minded stones? Whoa. They legions end mind stone. <laughs> Big brain plays. Technically, technically, I should have a Mind Stone untapped here. Because I could just untap, you know, I get to untap lands. I don't get to untap Mind Stones. So I could have just had left one Mind Stone untapped and cracked it if I wanted. Um, 
I guess it, I guess it doesn't matter if I just want to play this other Mind Stone. No, sorry, I'm late. It really doesn't matter. If I would have kept this other Mind Stone, if I wouldn't have cracked it, then I would have been able to play the Narset also. But of course, we wouldn't have the Narset in hand because we wouldn't have, wouldn't have cracked that Mind Stone. But with playing this Mind Stone now, next turn I can just go Narset Temporal Sundering and go from there. Opponent needs to be playing Ixalan's Bindings. Bounce a prison realm. Take another turn. Get my Teferi back. Now we have the veto to protect the Teferi. Let's skip to the good part. Draw a card. Hurry. Look for more stuff. Put thoughtfulness before action. I'm gonna leave with the Nar the Narset because it's our best way to find an extra turn spell. I know for this turn. I pick one. Yeah, I don't really know exactly how they were gonna be winning that. Especially with us having the Dovin's Veto. Alright, want to know? You'll get people that will just kind of concede pretty early, which, which will, may happen with this deck. Oh no, Fires makes the deck a lot better. Yeah, Fires is awesome. I'm gonna put the Temporal Sundering back and keep Nexus, I think. With Temporal Sundering needing a Planeswalker in play. And plus it's it's good to, you know, cast the Nexus because they don't they don't really count for a card. Yeah, like they'll they'll shuffle back. You know, like once you cast Temporal Sundering, it gets exiled, and so then the deck reduces from seven to six extra turn spells whenever you cast that. But when you cast Nexus of Fate, you still have seven extra turn spells in your deck. Yeah, but you don't need to play more than two cards a turn with Fires in play. Fires lets you use, like, your castles and, and uh, activate. Like, Fires with Azkanta is just amazing how you, you get to flip Azkanta, you get to activate your Azkanta, play your two cards a turn. Like, all you need to do is you just need one of them to be an extra turn spell. And then besides that... Hmm... Oh no, Teferi's good at slowing stuff down. Maybe I should be keeping Teferi there. But I'm probably gonna go like, you know, Fire's Clarion for this turn. Well now Clarion doesn't kill that thing. That hurts.
So basically, we are almost certainly dead here. If they have, like, literally anything, we die. If they have a mountain, we die. We're almost certainly dead, but if we don't die... Okay, that kills us. If we don't die, we had a really good chance of winning or close to it. You know, we were gonna we we're gonna really be able to take off. All right, so this is where we're bringing our baffling ends and our Ixalan's bindings, and we cut. So that's six cards. Temporal Sundering, Narset, and a Mindstone. <laughs> yeah, Fires of Invention basically is like cheating. No, I don't, King. Nope. I stream Arena every day. Yeah, uh, that is true. Um, as far as wild cards go, if you if you craft Nexus, there's there's a good chance the Nexus gets banned at some point. And if it if it does, then you get your wild cards back. No, I th I think four is, I think three is basically the minimum number of fires in a fires invention deck. I don't I wouldn't say that's the perfect number. I'm leaning towards four being more likely the the better number. I mean, you you can play one or two, but those kind of decks you just don't want to be relying on fires. Yeah, so I, I guess now historic cards are suspended, at least at first. They said in, like, March, which is a long ways away, but, like, in March they'll have the four cards they suspended in historic. They will either, at least by March, they will either officially ban them for good or reintroduce them back into the format. I don't, I don't know really what the point of that is, why you just can't... Band stuff. I mean, it's the same thing. But they they said they're not going to just suspend stuff forever. They said in there because that's not that's not fair. So like whenever they suspend a card, they put a timeline on making a decision of whether or not to ban it. But that's still a long ways. <laughs> yeah. It did seem like that's the reason why they created the suspended was to not give out wild cards. But also they said that if you receive like you know, like let's talk about Oko. You know, Oko was banned in standard. If you got wild cards for Oko being banned in standard already, if you got wild wild card um a refund of wild cards, when it's banned in historic, you're not going to get more wild cards because you already got your wild cards refunded. So they're only going to be refunding wild cards to people that didn't have that. You know, basically people that got Okos after after that and didn't get refunded. So I can't imagine that that, that affects too many people still, honestly. I'm going to just kind of go for casting the Realm Cloak Giant next turn. And just going to play Karn Tick Up. Karn does a really good job of hitting land drops because people almost always give you lands. Uh, my opponent is going to be giving me a land here. Doesn't really have a choice. I don't know why they gave me Island instead of Cliff Top Retreat whenever 
<laughs> Why would they give me island? That doesn't seem like the correct land to give me. It, you know, it doesn't make that big of a, a, of a difference for me, but still. It is best if you stop. I want to binding questing beast. This is basically the reason why I'm playing binding is because of questing beast. Because then playing questing beast over and over and over again is really rough. Two, three, four, five, six. Here we go. I think I want to try to have Teferi in play before I cast sure Nexus. You know what? I'm not done yet. I think we are. I think we are safe. But, huh. Why would they possibly concede there? Yeah, yeah, that island decision. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that that island decision was about, but I was, I'm very glad they did that because you know they killed the car, they were able to kill the car, and so I wasn't going to be able to go regrab it. Well, if they had no more threats in hand, if they didn't give me the island, I would have been casting the Clarion anyway and killing the the three three, but. Yeah, I wouldn't have had anything else. I wouldn't have had the Teferis in play or anything. Which I guess I probably couldn't even cast the Nexus before playing the Teferi anyway, could I? I probably needed to. Oh, no, no, because I shocked in. We shocked in the Steam Vents. We did draw the Steam Vents. Well, this was our one loss the last time that we played the deck. Remember, we had we had an, an awesome hand that was going to win whenever we got if we got five mana, but we didn't get five mana. We just got stuck on four because we had Fires of Invention in, in hand. We had Realm Cloak Giant to sweep the board, but we didn't even need to do that because we were going to have to ferry with Nexus, which with Fires of Invention in play. On turn four, on turn five, you can play Teferi and play Nexus because of the untapping two lands. It gives you seven mana. And because the Teferi costs zero. And so we're going to do that and be off to the races already on turn five. And then, you know, if if we didn't couldn't continue to take extra turns, we had the Realm Cloak Giant to sweep their board. And we would have been at a pretty healthy life total, but we just bricked on that land for two turns and then we died. Okay, we need to draw a shock land or a basic. Basically, basically we need to draw a shock land. Um, let's look for a shock land. All right, it's a shock land, but we 
We don't get to play Search for Escanta on turn two with that one, but we can't we can't put it to the bottom. But unfortunately, I don't get to play Search for Escanta. We can just put it in tapped, and then we'll have Glacial Fortress Clarion next turn. Thinking, like, what if I just played Mindstone that last turn and then set up Realm Cloak Giant the following? Yeah, could have been Embercleave. Um, a questing beast would have put us down to like two. Hey, Storm. Test a lot. I don't like my next turn. If, like, if they have Embercleave, I'm dead. I can't stop Embercleave from killing me. So it's either play Realm Cloak Giant to be a blocker, or play as Kanta plus Teferi, have Teferi, like, tuck something. Or as Kanta plus have Karn minus to be able to get a chump blocker. Yeah, I mean, we're dead if they have a lot of things. Um, all they needed was Questing Beast. Spellbreaker, Embercleave, any of those. We needed one more sweeper. We didn't have it. Or we need an extra turn spell. Didn't have that either. Uh, I don't know. An extra turn spell would have saved us. If they're playing aggro, this is going to be kind of rough. I really like Ascanta, but we're not we're looking at like turn three Ascanta. Yeah, you like Car make the two two with Karn and play Search for Ascanta. 
That could have been the better play. I mean, either either way, we you know we were gonna be dead to the the Ember Cleave that they had. There, I'm not sure. What? Jess guy. Who plays Jess guy? Hey, what's up, rank one? Thanks for resubbing here for six months now. I appreciate that. No, I would I would not say that our mana is consistent enough for castle. But the po ca castle's power with fire Rates of invention uh, is is just too it's too it's too strong not to play, and just castle with the it gives us a, a win con with the, all the extra turn cards, um, and of course it's very good with the fairy that can untap it as well. One white, one blue castle, and they're just too good not to play. This is the problem with, with Realm Cloak Giant, though, is if you run into somebody playing Bone Crusher Giant, this is obviously the problem here. Only two cards in the graveyard. Hey, Dejooms. on no bone crusher giant is such a good card such a good card Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of the best best cards in Throne of Eldraine in a set that has tons and tons of awesome cards. See how Bone Crusher Giant really makes red playable. 
by itself. I, I don't really know what I'm doing about that card. I think we're just going to have Clarion. I'm expecting... The, the, the thing is, I'm expecting them to have a lot of counter magic. Which I don't love. I'll take out Temporal Sunderings for a couple disputes and a veto. Alright, our hand's a little bit better here. Hey, Soul Farmer. But of course, we've seen the things that my deck struggles with the most are these early creatures that hit super hard. Spellbreaker, Questing Beast, Bonecrusher Giant. I could definitely wait a turn to make sure that doesn't get disputed, but then they could have negate available. Time for plan B. As soon as I think of one. No, I am not making this up as I go. Thank you. Not really taking advantage of the untap. So I can't really castle the untap castle again with this amount of mana. Well, that is an absolute killer. That is an absolute killer. Talk about a card I was not expecting. Right there. Hey, baloney pony. Uh, just normal stream schedule. Nothing different. Guess I gotta be careful for Spyglass after... 
uh, with a game three if we get there. Hey, what's up, light side? Thanks for the six month sub. I appreciate that. Our fourth sub of the day. I got two cards left. Clarion's perfect. Get that lifelink in there. That health is just not doing anything. I could just keep it in my hands. And see if my opponent plays any more scared. Now this Realm Cloak Giant's just the Abyss. We haven't seen any white in their deck yet. Yeah, basically, the reason why I didn't... Yes, waiting on Mindstone until after the Nexus is, is better. But the reason why I didn't is because I really wanted that Nexus to resolve. And so I wanted to see if we maybe hit a Counterspell. Or a Teferi Time Raveler. If we hit one of those <clears throat> to help it out, but it worked out. I mean, I guess we're going to play some Ixalan's Bindings because of Spyglass. We want another Veto also. How do I fit three slots? I mean, I guess I can cut one Realm Cloak Giant with them playing all these other Giants. <sighs> but I feel like they're going to have, you know, Crackling Drakes and... I feel like they're just going to have a bunch of their Drakes this time and not the Giants. But we're bringing in two other removal spells with the Bindings. Clarion probably only kills Bone Crusher Giant in their deck. It's like, do I need three Clarions? That's the only thing it kills. I mean, but they've they've just had a bunch of Bone Crusher Giants, but maybe that means the third game they're not going to. Um, just from what we've seen so far, 
the question is if you kill the bone crushers aren't you gonna win i mean just only because that's what we that's what they've drawn this time but i think that like with the third i i don't expect them to just draw all the bone crusher giants again for a third game in a row so i'm expecting them to draw more enigma drakes crackling drakes this game I need another white source, too. That steam vents draw was pretty bad. I mean, it does help these things come into play untapped. But I just don't want to keep... I just don't want to keep a seventh land, even though we do need another white source. Mine's done good. Hey, Sarah Angel. And there's the Drake. This Teferi is definitely going to die to a burn spell. It's dying to a burn spell 100% chance. I could tick up Teferi, and then it, you know, it's at 5 loyalty, it doesn't die to the burn spell, but then if they play... You know, they play Shock, they put it down to 3, then they get to attack it with the Enigma Drake, you know, maybe they play an Opt. I kind of like just getting the Enigma Drake off the battlefield here. Hmm. Obviously, next turn I'll have Teferi plus Veto. And it looks like this match, my opponent did not have a bunch of Bone Crusher Giants because it's probably like even on turn two they would have fired off the Bone Crusher Giant and then played it on turn three, like we saw them do game one. So it looks like I was right about them not having Bone Crusher Giants for the third game in a row. Good thing since we took out the Clarions. This could definitely be like double counter spell. You know what? We're going to. I mean, obviously, I do have the backup Teferi. Oh, I guess Veto can't be countered, but they would just re counter the Teferi again. I'm going to. Instead, though, I'm going to just. Like, this card's pretty messed up with it being an instant. We're just going to end step Nexus. If they don't counter it, we get two turns. And then we can do Teferi, Veto. They counter that. We untap. We still have another Teferi. Yeah, I guess I'll have to shock in the other white source. Um, I'm 
sure. Knowledge is the greatest work. With the courage to apply it. My answers lie in the cold truth. We need to move quickly. Oh, we're not getting an extra turn. Our nexus was, was countered. My plan is crystallizing. Crystallizing. I like both these cards. So I guess we just keep them. Keep up the pace. So shocking in here to be able to have <coughs> castle activation available. Obviously, I need to get rid of this Royal Scions now before it ultimates. Keep scrying. No, probably not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine mana. Wish they were tapped out, life would be easier. Ooh, no counter spell. Alright, get that thing out of here, tuck this. You need to take a time out. You know, if they were tapped out, we'd you know be able to tick up in Nexus. For certain for certain. Looking very good for us right now, though. My opponent would agree. All right, two and one. Whoa, we got a random card reward with a finale promise? Or is that like a level up reward? 
Awesome. A mythic I didn't have four of. There's a couple of those War of the Spark finales I don't have four of. Awesome. <laughs> We're always facing the chicken nugs. There's not enough people playing Historic. Thanks, Nielsen. Yeah, yeah, the new computer helping out the stream a lot. But thanks for sticking around with it through the old computer and and glad to have you here. We need to find Clarion. No, you can do best of one historic. Best of one historic is unranked. You just play, you just play in the play queue, and just join the play queue with your historic deck, and you'll play against somebody else who's playing historic. But yes, but then best of three is just ranked. At least that means we don't have to don't have to shock at least. I kind of want to just play the Teferi and tuck the spellbreaker honestly. I guess not. Because that, that would get the Teferi in play. Thin margins here. Let's slow this down. So best case scenario is I draw a card, we hit a land drop, and then I play Temporal Sundering, and that's awesome. But if we don't hit a land drop, we're dead to Ember Cleave. The safest play is to tuck the harpooner and play a play a Karn and minus. dead to that though I wish I could see the top card of my deck see if it was the land I could have played like Karn Sion of Urza and ticked up but that's probably a better chance of hitting a land man just one life all we needed was one life I 
Just one uh, life. One point. So close. We would have been dead if we would have played double card and make two tokens also. Well, I guess... No, I guess we would have only taken two. We would have chumped and blocked the three, two. We would have had one trample over. I mean, we'd, we'd be dead to Embercleave with that line. I wanted to have a line that we were not dead to Embercleave. That was kind of my goal there, was do a line that didn't die to Embercleave. But that line would have would have survived his Spellbreaker. Because with them, like, they weren't, they didn't have extra lands in hand. They had spells in hand, and just Embercleave was the most likely spell for them to still have in hand at that point. Ouch. Ouch. Center Vines is a big ouch. No, we didn't die to Ember Cleave with that line. Did we? Oh, I guess we did, didn't we? Oh, yeah. I guess my, my line didn't save from Embercleave, did it? I don't know why in my head I was thinking it did, but it did not. By scrying here, I don't get to. I don't get to play the Teferi. Gruel seems kind of hard for us to beat. Any 
find Ixalan's binding. Ugh. I can't cast a fairy right now. If I did not keep the baffling end, we would have had the Teferi in hand, and then life would have been a little bit easier. But I was thinking the baffling end could maybe take their next threat, but they had Hellkite and then Questing Beast. Gruul's tough. So we're 1 and 3 all time against Gruul now. We're 5 0 against everything else, and 1 and 3 against Gruul. I added in the Ixalan's bindings into the sideboard specifically for this matchup. <laughs> awesome, Azrael. Yeah, yeah, the Gruel, Gruel opponent definitely had a good draw. It's that's tough. You know, like they had one drop, two drop, three drop, you know, like they just kept on going. It just wasn't. Wasn't any let up. No, you can't, Kendis. I keep this. Really like Mindstone. Makes my deck a lot faster. Yes, we don't have blue mana, but we have this scry here. I need to find blue mana now though. If I if I just had two cliff top retreats, I would mulligan, but I kept with having the temple to scry and look. Come on, land. Jeez. No lands, though. In the top three. Okay. We're back in it. I don't think it's worth two life to play the Fires of Invention. Maybe it is. No, I don't think so. No, we have we have enough lands in the deck. We just you know didn't draw them in this game. Well now we did, but there's there's enough lands in the deck. They're going to be down to one card and three lands here after this Realm Cloak Giant. Why do they make that so loud? They make that so loud. Keep up the pace. <laughs> yeah, we do die to questing beast, that is true. Can't stop that for a turn. I'm known for my excellent fight. I need land. I have a plan. Hmm. Don't they realize that if they draw questing beast, they win? 
I guess not. So mono green creatures. I don't think I need Baffling End as much in this matchup, basically. I think this matchup's just kind of all about sweepers. Probably don't even need like these bindings. Probably just all about sweepers. I'm, I'm probably just fine here. Let's run it back. Yeah, that like maybe that's their only questing beast. Um, it's possible. Card doesn't die to Deafening Clarion. Well, so much for not wanting Baffling End. I guess I didn't really think of Steel Leaf Champion that just forgot about that card. I know my responsibility. Veer Day! All right, will do. Thank you so much for keeping that tier three sub going. Getting that donation deck as well. What do we got, Gruel Giants? Giants. All right, do you have a day and a time? Do you want me to play the Gruel Giants for your day? I know reverse. I know reverse. That's quite a brag. I won't hide from the world any longer. You. Slow down. The dreaded double tuck. All right, so we went three, two. Still, the, the Gruul matchup's tough because of all the haste creatures. You know, Gru when Gruul's curving out, it's still tough. You know, we have the, the three Realm Cloak Giants, the four Clarions, but then even adding in Baffling Ends and Ixalan's Bindings, it's tough. Kind of need some more life gain in here, I think. I don't know of, like, a good quality life gain spell to play that's also removal, that also does other things or something. I'm not sure. Um, maybe just better cheap removal. Maybe like, maybe instead of baffling ends, playing shocks. So you can have one mana removal. Get that get that removal even cheaper. I don't know. The shock doesn't kill everything, of course, but then it pairs up with Clarion to kill bigger things. Um, Revitalize is a good card. I don't, I don't think this really has room for Revitalize, though. That is a good card. But anyway, uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, let me know what you would do about the Gruul matchup. I think the Ixalan's Bindings were a step in the right direction. We don't have, like, tons of slots to change. I mean, maybe we do. Maybe I need to be sideboarding out more things. Um... But yeah, that's because so far, so we've played the deck twice now. We've played 10 matches. We're 1-3 and three against Gruul, and we are 6-0 and oh against everything else. So, so far, everything else we've been just fine against. It's that, that Gruul matchup. Got to keep working on that one. 
Um, but anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching some Jeskai taking turns. I uh, hope you enjoyed the deck. If you didn't check it out before, if if you missed it from the last time, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, hope, go go over to the playlist. I have the playlist on the channel. There's one that's historic. Take a look at this one from last Tuesday. We had a lot of fun with it then also. Uh, and we played a, a wider variety of matchups than really what we did here today. But that's it here for Jeskai Taking Turns. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.